हेलो दिस इज़ सुरेंद्र कागत एंड टुडे वी आर टू डील विद आवर लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री फॉल्ट एज वी हैव सीन इन आवर लास्ट टू इयर्स बी ए फर्स्ट ईयर एंड बी ए सेकेंड ईयर देर वॉज अ फिफ्थ पार्ट इन आवर सिलेबस इन द लास्ट यूनिट ऑफ चैप्टर फर्स्ट इट वॉज द पार्ट ऑफ लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री इज इन लास्ट टू ईयर्स वी स्टडीड विद एलिजाबेथन्स एंड न्यू क्लासिक्स इन फर्स्ट ईयर देन इन सेकेंड ईयर वी डेल्ट विद प्री रोमांटिक्स एंड रोमांटिक्स इन द सेम पैटर्न वी आर टू डील विद टू लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री पार्ट्स दिस ईयर द कंक्लूडिंग ईयर द फाइनल ईयर ऑफ थ्री ईयर डिग्री कोर्स इन पेपर फर्स्ट इन द लास्ट यूनिट लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री एंड वी आर टू डील विद वन मेजर लिटरेरी मूवमेंट एंड वी कॉल इट विक्टोरियन पीरियड विक्टोरियन पीरियड एज द नेम सजेस्ट आफ्टर विक्टोरिया गोट इट सो विक्टोरियन पीरियड इज द टाइम्स ऑफ क्वीन विक्टोरिया ऑन इंग्लिश क्राउन सो विक्टोरियाज अशेंशन इन एटीन थर्टी सेवन ऑन इंग्लिश क्राउन एंड हर डेथ नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड वन so this uh, almost a period of 70 plus years this we call with the name the victorian period in english literature so what was that which is the major concern with this very word victorian victorian values or victorian uh, uh, characteristics victorian uh, surroundings or why this particular time frame when people wrote and they were termed victorian was it that much politically influenced or was that a kind of a symmetrical pattern or a kind of uh, oneness uh, a kind of a same sequential uh, a kind of a congruency is there in kind of Uh, the creative minds uh, which dealt with the, even historiography painting drawing whatever literary world as well so these uh, 70 years almost 70 years they are termed in a particular word which we call literary movement victorian period the victorian period or victorianism uh, last year we dealt with romanticism Uh, pre romantics and romantics were almost a period of 100 years from 1740 to 1830 uh, this high romanticism it didn't uh, survive long almost a period of uh, 30 plus years so uh, this the libertine attitude uh, it faded reform bill passed in 1832 then queen victoria came on english crown in 1837 what was that that mad victorianism or that mad the times people living in that mad the last 60 70 years of 19th century uh, in general in a kind of a repo in a kind of a tempo in a kind of an atmosphere in a kind of a thing which only was in power which uh, made those 70 years uh, in a fixed uh, uh, kind of a thing which we call with the name victorian period victorianism uh if you look for the historical political philosophical uh, the sociological or we if you deal with social sciences part uh world history goes with big names you must have heard of Rousseau, who was the who affected the Romantics as well, but in this nineteenth-century British uh, political historical uh, situation, we find a major name, Karl Marx, the author of *Das Kapital*. marxism communist communism karl marx marxist these words we still hear these words are still very prevalent 
Karl Marx was there. He is not a common man. He is a man for centuries. One uh, big name we also might, must have heard in our schooling, uh, in certain discussions of uh, biology. Uh, there was a name, if you uh, still recall, Charles Darwin, Theory of Evolution. We were evolved from the chimpanzees, monkeys, or who were our ancestors, uh, or tadpole, and then the today's frog, larva, tadpole, and frog. This uh, scientific evolution of species. He wrote a uh, world fame book, The Origin of Species. Uh, you uh, are very much aware of one thing which was there in center, which was there in power, which was there in capitalism. Or I say London City is the center of the world, the commercial world, the mercantile world. Or business, commerce, mercantile, that all was at the center. East India Company came here 400 years back, you will wonder for an Astings East India Company. They came for commercial explorations, not only geographical, not only uh, the quest to know the world, but the tool, the route they chose, it was the commercial part. Our Koinur is still there. <laughs> so Britishers stayed here almost 400 years. They went to every part of the world and there was one thing which was in power which made them uh, the top, the epitomical top, the height of the heights, who ruled for a very, very long time, that was um, due to their commerce. And what was uh, that very word which uh, came into historical, political, uh, the rest of the uh, uh, branches of learning? Industrialization came out of industry. Industries were developed. Raw materials were uh, brought from the rest of the colonies of the world and they were refined or they were processed and they were supplied. So the colonies were the markets and they were uh, the sources to go for that raw material, our spices and all that. You will wonder. Um, English people went all over the world. So industrialization again or later on in modern time in the later history part this year as well, 1900 onwards, the 20th century, over-industrialization, commercialization, over-commercialization. So this industrialization, this industrialization, we are, we are discussing only the historical part, the political part. Industrialization uh, means uh, production or overproduction or production and consumption. So the demand and supply, the very basic concept. So people were uh, to earn, people were to go for uh, refinement, people were to raise themselves up, people were to grow. Grow means monetarily, pesa, money, to grow rich. So this or to survive in a betterment or to go for a refinement or to go for luxury you can say. So this quest, this desire, this eagerness, this uh, thirst, this hunger, uh, it came to over industrialization. Industries were there as the part of uh, and the economic, the sociological, the political perspective. There were drawbacks. I must tell you, there were drawbacks of industrialization. What were they? Uh, industries were demanding manpower, 
urban spaces were there for the rich people, the urban people, the bourgeois or the elite, elite class. Uh, they don't need to go for the labor work. So they wanted manpower. It was there in the countryside, the remote areas. So people in search of job, people to pacify their hunger, people in the name of progress, they moved from villages, countryside, remote areas to the urban cities, to urban spaces, to the urban world. And the urban space, it was very well structured, very well maintained. It was so refined, so beautifully architectured. But when these labors, the factory workers, they moved to cities, cities were overcrowded. Suppose a city is capable to uh, lodge and board it uh, thousand people. There were five thousand people, five times. So what happened then? They all settled all around the city in the outskirts of those big areas and overpopulated was the area then. So what came as the consequential part was uh, the problem of health and hygiene, the fights, the communal rights, the differences and distinctions and uh, classes, cultural conflicts. So people with the Marxist approach as well, who was uh, a big name in the sociological change, in the big political change, in the history of manhood, in world history, Marx was the big name. So groups were made. On one side there were haves, on the other side there were have-nots. On one side there were factory owners, on the other side there were factory laborers. On one side there were overall whole, on the other part there were less or nothingness or the deprived or the rejected or the neglected. So there was a big gap, there was a big gap regarding uh, haves and have-nots. There were classes, there were fights, fights not only on the basis of uh, the cultural, the original or the basic difference between them, but keeping in mind the economic injustice, keeping in mind the rights, the fight for rights. So this awareness, one thing. So it was a period of classes. Darwin, so classes in societal pattern, classes in sociological purview or politics, politics of economy. It was played, politics of uh, materialism. It was the kind of uh, a clash. So there were groups, there were tops and bottoms, there were clear cut uh, divisions. Uh, I mentioned one name, Charles Darwin, the origin of species. See, if science says, if one person uh, is going to prove, if he gives logical justification or if he is very well equipped with observation and database and all that, the practical approaches, and he says that we are offsprings of these monkeys or when a species, when any organism, living organism is developed, it, de it was developed gradually from years long, centuries long, millions of years were the result of our today's this species. But uh, religion says, Adam and Eve were our original parents or in Hinduism says Raja Ram or all those uh, mythological parts, there was a clash. People were in a kind of 
confusion, in a kind of doubt, in a kind of uncertainty, what to believe, the religion or the science, Marx or Bible. So it was a time which dealt with uh, doubt, confusion, chaos, uncertainty. People were not sure of anything. So that is what Victorianism is. That was what was over refinement. So there were groups, there were divisions, there were over classifications, there were categorizations, uh, there was the rise of social sciences, later on Weber and Max Weber. Uh, they came into management theories. So this rise of social sciences, this rise of the complete uh, outside change, the political change, the sociological change, the historical change, no doubt, it was, it was the change reflected in literature as well. So this period of 19th century, almost a period of 70 years, it was a period of doubt, uncertainty, chaos, confusion. Uh, that's all about its historical perspective. In our next class, we shall be discussing the major poets we are dealing this year and uh, their major writings, uh, what were the left outs about the surroundings uh, of religion and politics. That shall be the part of our discussion in our next class. So this is the part we discussed after Romanticism before modernism, before 20th century, almost a period of 70 years. Uh, this is um, all for our today's class. Thank you.